The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples left for the villages round Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, they said. Others, Elijah. Others again, one of the prophets. But you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter spoke up and said to him, you are the Christ. And he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man was destined to suffer grievously, to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and to be put to death, and after three days to rise again. And he said all this quite openly. Then, taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. He called the people and his disciples to him and said, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, but anyone who loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So today we are celebrating the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And the theme for our reflection during this Mass today about the Word of God is Christ the Son of Man. Yeah? Now where is this, this theme specifically coming from? It comes from today's Gospel whereby we see Jesus instructing his disciples and telling them that the Son of Man is destined to suffer grievously, be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and to be put to death. And after three days, he will rise again. Okay, so this is where our reflection is coming from today. This idea this teaching of Jesus, his prophecy of his own suffering, death, and resurrection. And he calls himself the Son of Man. So the Son of Man is how he refers to himself. And we know indeed he is the Son of God. Yeah? Okay, and all this came after he had asked them, who do people say I am? So this is a point of reflection for us also. Who is Jesus to you? Who is he to you? Hopefully he is in your life, your personal Lord and Savior. We hope this. We truly hope that this is our faith and that we believe that he is the Son of God. Yeah, This is our Catholic faith. And when somebody doesn't believe this anymore, of course, they will depart from our community because they don't believe anymore in the identity of who Jesus is. Okay, so who do I say Jesus is? This is the question that we can ponder upon. And if you are here, if you are a believer, you know he is the Son of God, he is the Savior of the world. By his death on the cross and by his resurrection, he has conquered sin and death and through him we have the gift of salvation the promise of eternal life okay so that is our faith and that is what we teach our children that is what we continue to grow in and strengthen our belief in okay now coming to this idea of suffering that's something i would like to talk about today because Suffering is something that I think nobody here wants. Is that true or not? 
Anybody here happy to suffer, wants to suffer, day in, day out suffer, suffering is my bread and water. If you are someone like that, I think you might need to go and see a psychiatrist. Something is wrong. So it's very normal for us to be adverse to suffering. But it does not change the fact that in life, we will have to go through suffering. It can't, you can't change that reality. And Jesus suffered, yes, but he suffered for a purpose. And that was to show us the love of God and also to pay the debt of our sin and also to show us the way to heaven. So suffering happens, but it should not be senseless. There should be meaning and purpose in life. And when you suffer, also we can learn from Jesus, we must go through it willingly. All right, For it to be fruitful and beneficial, it must be willingly undertaken or undergone. And that's what the first reading reminds us from the prophet Isaiah. We read, the Lord opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance. In other words, I accepted willingly. I opened my ear. I listened and I accepted. Neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me. So, you know, one thing that makes suffering in our life even worse, when we feel that we have no say in what we are going through, when we feel unwilling to go through that suffering. And of course, sometimes the suffering we go through is unjust and we should resist it. But at other times, there are good things that we are going through that entail some kind of suffering. And if we want to benefit from that, we should do it willingly and even with a happy heart okay but normally when we think of the word suffering all negativity comes in pain and suffering and you can imagine only a sad face right but it's not true someone can be going through a lot of suffering but if they are going through it willingly for a good purpose for the sake of god for the sake of the gospel for the sake of their loved ones and they do it with an open heart and mind, trusting in the assistance of God, that person should still have a smiling face. Okay? And it all depends on how we are going through that suffering. All right. So now, as Christians, we like to also associate this word suffering with the symbol of our religion, which is the cross. We think of the cross only, we think of suffering. It's not wrong because we know Jesus suffered on the cross. That's why we associate cross with suffering. But you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the symbolism of the cross is much more than just suffering. Okay? It is suffering out of love. We have to distinguish what kind of suffering, not mindless, purposeless suffering, but suffering out of love, sacrificial love, that is actually what the cross is a symbol of. The cross is also a symbol of hope because we know from the cross came our salvation. So let us not reduce the symbolism of the cross only to just suffering and even that unqualified suffering, sufferings of all sorts. No. Sacrificial love. Suffering out of love for one another. That is the real meaning of the cross. Yeah? And when we look at it, it is indeed a beautiful symbol. Now, we like to say, you know, when somebody is going through a rough patch, something bad has happened in their life, they are going through sickness and whatever, immediately we will say, oh, this is the cross you have to bear. This is the cross you have to carry. You know, we like to say that we know what we mean. It's our way of maybe encouraging the person, you know, you've got to go through this with faith. All right? But sometimes someone who hears this, they may get a negative a negative message and that is God wants me to suffer that's all God has sent me this cross this heavy cross for me to suffer 
and my suffering is meaningless and why does God want me to go through this? So be careful what we say to people, you know. We may want to comfort them, but we might end up doing the exact opposite. And not only that, we may cause them to be angry with God. My dear brothers and sisters, suffering is part and parcel of life. Falling sick is part and parcel of life. All kinds of things happen. Let us not be so quick to say, Oh, God has sent you this cross. Who appointed you and me to be God's prophet to say this is the cross came from God for you? Who? Nobody. So let us not assume. And instead of worrying about where this suffering came from, let us worry about how can we help this person suffer less? How can we alleviate the suffering of this person? So remember, dear brothers and sisters, Christianity is not a religion about suffering. We are not worshipping suffering. We are not putting up suffering as the ideal of life. If we did that, we are all sons of the devil. He wants to see humanity suffer and suffer to the point that they will curse the Creator. That is what the devil wants. And when, when we are a false prophet and telling people that this suffering has come from God for you so that you pay for your sins, we are being a prophet of Satan because that person will only hate God. Okay, be careful. Huh? It's good to be a prophet, but don't be Satan's prophet. <laughs> Okay. Instead, be the angel of God. You know, when Jesus was suffering in the garden of Gethsemane, the Bible tells us, an angel came to comfort him. Remember how much he suffered in the garden. He was pleading with his father, please take this chalice away. Despite knowing that three days later he's going to be resurrected. But his suffering was real. Though the hope of resurrection was there. And yes, God sent an angel to comfort him. Even Jesus needed to be comforted when he was suffering. Yeah? So please be that angel. <laughs> and comfort the person who is suffering. And this has always been what we Christians believe. We don't glorify suffering. Just because our Christ suffered doesn't mean we want everybody to suffer and we think that is all life is about, suffering. In fact, it is the exact opposite. We say, enough, one has suffered, no more. That is where suffering should end. That is our real religion. And where there is suffering still in this world, we are sent as God's angel to bring comfort, to bring care, to bring relief. That is our religion actually. And that is why Catholic Church, in fact, we are more concerned about building schools, we are more concerned about building hospitals, orphanages, soup kitchens, helping out the refugees, the immigrants. Because why? The world is suffering. But God has sent his angels and that is each one of us here and the church works towards the alleviation of suffering never the glorification of suffering and that is our mission so remember when you look at the cross even if you want to think of it as a symbol of suffering think of it more as a symbol of our responsibility to alleviate the suffering in this world. Okay, I think you got my point. Huh? So we have to sometimes correct some of our wrong ideas, the wrong things that we do, because we will be presenting a false Christianity to others. And instead of leading people to Christ, we'll be chasing people away. Yeah, And we ourselves will be confused, not knowing what our faith is about. Okay, first reading covered, gospel covered. Now coming to second reading, it's the ending. Second reading, very simple reading. And St. James tells us, you know, he tells us, your faith without the good deeds, it is dead. 
and how true this is. It doesn't matter whether you know all the doctrines of the church, whether you know, uh, whether the, you know and understand the doctrine of the Trinity, whether you know that you know Jesus is your Savior, whether you are calling him Lord, Lord. Even Jesus said, why you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Away from me. Our religion is not just about knowing who God is, knowing all our doctrines, knowing our religious practices, knowing whether or not we are saved by faith or by deeds or by faith and by deeds. All of these intellectual ponderings, some of which are theological ponderings, yes, the theologians will be arguing about these things. But at the end of the day, when I see someone who is hungry, do I care for that person? And do I offer that person a piece of bread or a bowl of rice or a kwetiao or mihun, whatever it is? When I see someone who is homeless, do I try to do something, find shelter for that person? When I see someone who is sick and has no money to buy medicine, will I be the first to go to the pharmacy and get some simple medication for the person or maybe even bring the person to the doctor? And I'm not talking about strangers, you know. These people are even in our families. Not necessarily suffering from abject poverty. There are so many people in this world abandoned. Abandoned by their loved ones. Some of those loved ones are supposed to be God's angels, but don't know what happened. They lost the way somewhere. But hopefully that's not us. Huh? And this is where what St. Jane says is so true. Faith without works is dead. And so do you think it really matters if you know that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Saviour? But a person who is hungry, you say, not my problem, not my cross. person who is thirsty, you say, not my problem, not my cross. person who is sick, you say, not my problem, not my cross. Oh, but it's okay. Jesus died on the cross. He paid for all my sins. I'm living a good life. I don't do any sins. I keep the commandments. When I die, I'll go to heaven. Are you so sure? At the gates of heaven, St. Peter will ask you, Oh, you know, that day... Uh, Jesus came to visit you, you know. He was hungry, actually. <laughs> and then you told him, go away. Uh, the other day, Jesus came to visit you also, you know. He was thirsty, actually. And you said to him, I don't know who you are, go away. Now you are at the gate of heaven saying, oh, I know who Jesus is. St. Peter will say, really? Uh? So many times he came to you, you said, go away. <laughs> I think you do not know who he is. It's your turn now. Go away. You call me Lord, Lord, but you do not do what I say. Truly, faith without deeds is dead. And when we are dead, we will have no life in us. We will not be life-giving. And what can we even think about having eternal life? Yeah? Eternal life, my dear brothers and sisters, is here on this earth. Already it begins now. When you live the life God is asking of you, when you live as a good Christian, when you live as another Christ, that is when you are already living in the eternity of heaven. Yes, in the midst of the suffering of this world. And already you are fulfilling your role as a saint of God. Okay, so that's supposed to be the last point. Only one, one two sentences left, sorry. And that is, I want to propose a new idea for us to think about the cross. Okay, we think of it as suffering, think of it as alleviating suffering, all the other things I mentioned as a sacrifice, all those things are good. But you know what? The cross is also a symbol of our responsibilities. That's all. All of us have responsibilities. So there's no one here who doesn't have a cross. And yes, carrying out our day-to-day -day responsibilities as a father, as a mother, as a parent, as a spouse, as a child for your elderly parents, as a sibling for a, a sibling who is not well, in your workplace, whatever it is your occupation is, these are all responsibilities that you have. And if you fulfill them well, let me tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, you are also carrying the cross. 
And that is also part of our spirituality. Don't think that carrying the cross is only doing charity work. The charity work that the NGOs are doing or even Catholic Church is doing, you know. But in our day-to-day -day life, the cross is also simply fulfilling our responsibilities well, whatever it may be. And the responsibility that Jesus had, it was to save the whole world. What a great responsibility he had. And we praise God, we thank God, because he said, yes, I am going to fulfill that responsibility. And for that reason, today, we are here giving thanks to God in the Most Holy Eucharist, privileged to receive his body and blood so that we can become God's angel on this earth.